Welcome to Hale Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hale Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it. Fridays here at Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, back at our ESPN Lincoln Studios. The suit to my right, uh, Rob Kelly on the road. It is a road show Friday as we're here at the I Hotel on the patio here at Hula Hands. Uh, you're welcome to join us if you're making your trip into Champaign Urbana. We are a shanked putt away. Uh, from Memorial Stadium here uh, with Illinois, Nebraska kicking off at high noon. And uh, we're doing this a few times this year on the road and uh, just juiced to be doing it. Big thanks to our man Sammy at the I Hotel getting us set up here on the patio for today's show and a real red reaction immediately following a Nebraska win tomorrow. We will tell you how that gets done on the show in uh, just uh, mere moments. We are going to interrupt his workout because he still looks like he can throw for about three bills. Uh, Brock Heward, part of the Fox broadcast, will join us on site. Uh, Brock Heward, uh, friend of the show, excited to talk with him. Hung out with him in Boulder two years ago. Different result, we pray, than Boulder, uh, the last road show. And we have some friends to thank when it comes to the road show today for Hale Varsity. Aero Capital uh, powering this roadie out east to Champaign-Urbana, along with Ferris Financial Group. Numbers to dial up, 466-3776-4673-700-825-5865. Email the show, Chris, at HaleVarsity.com. And uh, you go ahead and find and follow us on Twitter. Give us a shout. Tell us where you're at, your mile marker, your score prediction, whatever you want to do at Schmidt underscore radio and at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. Uh, Elijah, are you are you buckled in? Are you ready to go? Two hours here. Uh, and, man, it's good to be back, and football is alive and well. Uh, I, I couldn't be more excited. There's no way you're getting a smile off my face today. Uh, Husker football is back, and even better than that, it's back before the rest of the country. Uh, we get to watch the Huskers before everyone else does. Uh, I mean – Worried could also be a word I'd use uh, when you look at this game tomorrow, but for the most part, it, it, it's excited. <laughs> excited or worried, right? That's kind of the duality going on. Rob DeSuit, sir, you yes. are uh, a great road trip partner. This is fun. We were bumping around uh, near campus, grabbing a sandwich earlier, and you know what? All the national guys are chirping here about how big a deal this is tomorrow yeah, this, for, this, for Scott Frost. This is a huge deal for the nation to look at Scott Frost. Is this going to be the year that makes or breaks Scott Frost is what uh, the nation wants to find out. And uh, because it's week zero and because this game was originally set for uh, being overseas in Ireland, the entire nation's going to watch this thing come down tomorrow uh, against the uh, new head coach here at Illinois and, and Scott Frost. Is this make or break season for Scott? That is code Nebraska fans to drink your red beer tomorrow. Lots of it. But also, since it's not in Ireland, but it's supposed to be in Ireland, fire up a Guinness. Oh, there you go. Fire up a it, it, It's as thick out here as the Guinness is in your glass. But uh, you've got the numbers to get in. And so where I want to go today as we uh, open things up and loaded show for you, Brock Heward in 20 minutes, uh, part of the Fox broadcast, great quarterback at Washington, longtime NFLer. Uh, Brock Heward will sit down with us here uh, in hour two. The pride of Fairbury and NBC Sports, Bill Dolman, former host of the Tom Osborne Show. Uh, he'll be with us. And then our dear friend Jeremiah Searles, part of the, uh, the sideline crew for Nebraska. Uh, Searles going to be with us. Uh, at 525, and uh, it is football season, which means the return of Clausburn. He's imaginary, and he wears red. We will have our score predictions. So I look at a couple of different things here, Elijah and Rob. I look at, at Nebraska. I look at confidence. I look at the patience aspect of things here with, you know, going about things with your game plan. 
how patient will Nebraska be with their game plan uh, when it comes to running the football? We've had a lot of coaches on this week. We've had the experts who've played the, the game tell us about that, that test of patience when it comes to how you can win this football game, how Nebraska can win the game because they're bigger and they're stronger is going to be the old body shots to the rib, the old Rocky Balboa trying to chop the Russian down in Rocky Four. It was body shot, body shot, body shot by uh, Sylvester Stallone in Rocky Four to avenge Apollo, right? Well, revenge is is on the minds of a lot of Nebraska fans for, for last season at Memorial Stadium when Illinois and Lovey and that gorgeous beard came in. And, uh, and and not only covered, but doubled. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was only uh, one, two, two victories for Illinois last year. It, it was yeah, two. Just right? two for it, Illinois. It was, and one was, of them came at two. the hands of Nebraska. Uh-huh. Yes. The hands of Nebraska and five turnovers. Yes. So confidence and patience uh, are, are things that are going to be uh, very important. But Elijah, Nebraska's openings have been shaky. And it's not just a frost thing. You can go back to the BYU Hail Mary that got things off on the wrong foot with a really talented team. You go back to uh, to, to the Akron game with Mother Nature uh, sticking both middle fingers in the air, and uh, Lightning washed that thing out. Last year um, was, the, are you going to play? You're not going to play? Oh, okay. You're going to play, and you're going to go to Columbus against Ohio State, which bring it on. You, uh, to be... Nebraska. Eventually, you got to get back to playing well in some of those games. So I'm not whining about the schedule at all. But you go back to 2019, our last road trip, and you know the you had victory in your hands against uh, Colorado, and 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 that faded away. So uh, it is all about Nebraska's patience. It's about Nebraska's run game. It's about just wailing away at a team that wants to out physical you, and really has done that over the last couple three seasons. Uh, don't jump the gun. Don't get impatient with trying to chuck the football around. By all means, try going downtown. Do so off a of play action. I'm, I'm all for that, but I think your bread and butter tomorrow can be what Greg Austin and Coach Lubick really love to do on offense, and that's run and run downhill with uh, you know some options Nebraska has. Second part of this thing, Elijah, is going to be Nebraska's defense. We know the black shirts are talented. We know the black shirts want to take a step forward with just how good they are uh, as a as a whole defense, as a complete defense, as a strength of the 2021 football team. Man, they've got to take uh, more steps uh, against the run. And they could be better overall this season against the run. It may not look like it. Uh, when it comes to the word dominant tomorrow, because I think Illinois is pretty decent. I think Illinois is pretty decent with their offensive line. They've got a couple of good running backs that are uh, are, are very good. There's no more Reggie Corbin, but but Brown is is very talented. Uh, four numbers to know. Uh, in the last two seasons, Illinois has ripped off a 58, a 66, a 35, and a 36-yard uh, run for a touchdown. Now Epstein's no longer here, but those are some numbers. In the last two games, Illinois has amassed 506 yards of rushing against Nebraska. I don't know what you think, Elijah. I don't think Brandon Peters is a great quarterback. He's absolutely the kid you say, don't scratch the car, keep it between the, the white lines. If you're Nebraska, you load up to stop the run, Elijah, and you let you let him, you let Peters try and beat you. I don't think he can do it. And if you shut down that run game, it's a long day for Illinois. Yeah, and, and Nebraska has more talent across the board than Illinois. I think they have more talent at the quarterback position. I think they have more talent along the lines of scrimmage. I think uh, the, the one place where Illinois might have the advantage we don't really know yet is uh, that running back position. Illinois has got three experienced guys coming back at running back. That's the one place where they, they have the experience uh, and the talent edge in you are on you. Uh, but everywhere else across the board, Nebraska's got the talent. Uh, it comes down to can Nebraska match the physicality of Illinois. And when you look at the place where that's most important, that's along the lines of scrimmage Nebraska has more depth uh, so while this might be a, a game that is a little nervous early whenever the, these two teams are feeling each other out I think Nebraska's depth means that if they can just match the physicality or exceed the physicality of Illinois throughout the game they should be able to outlast this Illinois team um, but again at the end of the day it's, it's about Nebraska can they 
limit their turnovers? Uh, can they limit shooting themselves in the foot with dumb penalties? Uh, and, and can the special teams step up to a place uh, that we haven't seen the past couple years? It's all about the, the self-inflicted mistakes because, again, Nebraska's got the uh, the talent, and it looks like from what we've seen the past couple years, Nebraska has stepped up their physicality enough they should be able to at least match this Illinois team. It's going to be interesting, too. We think Nebraska's offensive line can be really good this year. And uh, Turner Corcoran, I think, will we'll probably get the nod tomorrow. He's been back at practice. He's had to knock a little rust off, which is which is fine. Uh, are we going to see Turner pick up where he left off, left off against a really good athletic defense in Rutgers last December? Uh, because uh, you know Illinois is going to be, it's going to be new. It's going to be different. You can try and prep for it, but it, it's a first for the the talent Brett Bielema has on that defense. And uh, they've got Carney and Gay that can come off the edge. So uh, Adrian's athleticism can help him extend some plays tomorrow, uh, can help him make some plays tomorrow. But uh, those big guys, uh, those bookends off the edge for Nebraska, the offensive tackles, Ben Hart, and, uh, of course, Turner Corcoran and, and Banks, if we do see him, they've got to be on their game to give Adrian a little bit. Here's what's, re- here's what's real as well. We mentioned the rushing, the big plays on the ground Illinois has had the last two years. We've mentioned the, the number of, of rushing yards Illinois has put up. Nebraska's done their fair share of big plays on offense, too. And I think for the first time in a while, Nebraska's going to be able to, if they give Adrian some time on play action, I think they're going to really be able to introduce Husker Nation to some incredible wide receivers, and there's a lot of them. You've got a Martin that's that's been good enough to play at a Michigan and in Iowa. Now he's in Lincoln. You've got Toure in the slot. Don't know about Omar. If, if Omar's up to speed or there's some, some, um, some packages for him, then Omar can, can be nice for Nebraska. Austin Allen is is a matchup nightmare. His catch radius is phenomenal. The guy blocks the sun, and he's got the basketball background, so he can go get the football for you. And then you got Xavier Betts. So I love what Nebraska has at the wide receiver position. I love the potential rotation Nebraska has. And it's not just one or two guys you got to worry about. It's, all right, it's a slew of guys that you've not seen. Uh, you've not seen if you're Illinois, and if you give Adrian time and the run game gets going, boom, Nebraska can put up some points. Uh, I'll have my prediction here in about an hour and a half, but I honestly believe if Nebraska stays patient, Nebraska can impose their will. We talk about the 90s a lot. Nebraska football is always referenced uh, in, in, in awe and in honor with the 90s and also mocked right for the 90s. But it could be a 90s-type day. We know the temperature is going to be in the 90s tomorrow. But uh, the old-school way of winning football is pounding away at your opponent, running the football, and then by the fourth quarter, it is time to scream because you're tired, you're not, you're, you're not deep, and you got 300-pound uh, hog mollies wailing away on you all game. I think that's your, that's your recipe for success. Uh, with Nebraska. Numbers to get in today, 466-3776-800-825-5865. Can uh, keep your tweets coming in. We'll read some of those in a little bit. It's at Schmidt underscore radio, at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. Brock Heward is about five minutes away. It really is as simple as just running the damn ball tomorrow for Nebraska football and uh, and playing good defense. One thing that you're going to see tomorrow, I do believe, is Nebraska with a starter on special teams. You're going to have a starter at, starter at different levels on special teams. And uh, we have Mr. Brock Heward making his way uh, to the show, which is great. Uh, we'll uh, check in with Brock here in, in one second. It's... We, this guy cut his workout short for us. Bless his heart. He did. And <laughs> you're putting a towel down? Yeah. All right. That's okay. The sweaty, sweaty. We say hi to Brock Ewart here. And Brock, good to see you again. It's been a while since media days. Yeah. What is it, a month? It has been. How is the, let's, uh, let's, let's get the Brock Don't be looking Ewart. at my board either, by the way. No, I that's fine. You. Don't be looking at my notes. No, your notes are good. You have much more you beautiful think, handwriting you, than You think than we're I ready do. for the opener tomorrow? I think you're really ready for the <laughs> opener, man. How was the workout, though, first and foremost? They got a Peloton in there. It's okay. calling your name. It said you're off at 7, so, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so seven, you Brock can hop Ewart on side eyes me and says, "Yeah, Schmidt's a Peloton guy." <laughs> uh, yeah, Schmidt's I, a Patron I, guy. Sadly, I have to put down a bathroom towel when I do the Peloton in, in gyms like this because mm-hmm. I don't want to leave Lake Heward underneath the Peloton. Lake, Lake yes. Heward. Yeah, so it would be a big sweat pile mess for whoever's going to be on it next. So I put the towel down. Towel down doesn't look so bad and. I'm ready to go, man. Are you guys ready? Holy cow. You all have pissed Scott off back in Lincoln. What's uh, wrong? What have you done I, to him? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had the uh, the meeting today. It was great with us, man. He, yeah. I don't know what you all did back there. We're just wondering, <laughs> is this the year? Yeah. Is this year the penalties are, are cleaned up? Is this year the... Uh, the running game is solidified. Is this? And I feel for him because he grew up here. Yep. You you uh, played him uh, a couple of times in your career. Mm-hmm. So, and I know you know Scott pretty well. But yeah, he's he was something fierce and feisty on on Monday, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I think I look at it more as a locked in Scott versus versus anything else. But I think yeah. he I think he has ticked off a little bit. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think a couple things since I joined you a month ago at Big Ten Media Days and just prepping the last four weeks and reading every article and studying everything I could. I'll tell you, the one thing that jumps out to me, you mentioned the run game and some of those other elements and penalties. How about 5-12 and 12 in one possession games? Hang on to that. We've got two minutes. We're back as Brock Heward hit on a, a elephant. A giant elephant in one possession games, and it may be that way, says Vegas. Uh, standout quarterback, Hall of Famer Brock Heward, Chris Schmidt. Roadshow with Hale Varsity, back from Champaign after this. And we're back. Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio? On Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes, that's awesome. Back with you, Tail Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt and uh, part of the Fox crew, a great color analyst and uh, All-American with the Washington Huskies, Brock Heward with us. And, Brock, you've, you've had a lot of experience checking out Nebraska. We, we go back to the time in the opener a couple of years ago in Boulder. We left off uh, mm-hmm. a little bit ago about just kind of the tone, the mood, the spotlight on Coach Frost nationally and and locally, and, and oh yeah, by the way, uh, Brett Bielema, we haven't quite figured out the over-under on, on jet sweeps he's going to run <laughs> tomorrow yeah. in, in tribute to the Big uh, Big Ten title game from back in 2012. Yeah, yeah, they're going to do a little bit of everything. I think that's going to be some of the challenge. I know, and listening to Scott with you guys back locally, you know, you can't go chasing ghosts, though, Chris. You can't mm-hmm. spend all your time, oh, what are they going to do? Are they going to run, you know, what Peterson did at App State, what he did at East Carolina? Are they going to run what Bielema has done at Wisconsin and Arkansas? Ultimately, they're going to run the ball, okay? You know they're going to try to establish that. they got an excellent offensive line, you know, three big boys that pushed, them, frankly, pushed Nebraska around last year. Right, I watched that tape back, and... Gosh, I, I got to fight that too. Like in, going into these openers, broadcasters are a little bit like coaches. You've got to fight, you know, chasing ghosts. You got to fight putting too much into that tape from last year. Because if you watch that game last year and all the personnel basically returns for both sides, mm-hmm. that was not pretty for Nebraska. And I know it wasn't Adrian, it was Luke, and it was five turnovers, but more than anything, it was at the line of scrimmage. And that's where it's going to be tomorrow. I mean, I hate to be Mr. Vanilla football analyst it's guy. what it is. But it is what it is. I mean, you've got just great strength and experience and power at Illinois up front. They like their two tight ends. They're going to run four guys at you. And, you know, Nebraska's got to be bigger and stronger and faster defensively in their front seven. They believe they are, right? Coach Shenander chatting with him as well yesterday. Like, you know, this is not back to baby steps four years ago, right? This is not installing base defense. You all know it. You've all been here. You've been in the weight room. <laughs> I'll give you one great funny little anecdote from Cam Jurgens along these lines at the line of scrimmage. I said, did I read somewhere you, you squatted 705? He's like, dude, it's not about weights in Nebraska. It's about plates. So I don't even know what the weights, <laughs> the total weight was. I think it was eight plates on each side. And I'm like, yep, that, that wasn't the way four years ago. But all of that is talk, and it will all come into fruition on the play and, and in the play tomorrow. It, it is line of scrimmage. I want to talk to you, and, and you know this well, about rhythm. Yep. About rhythm for both quarterbacks here. Adrian, two years ago, incredible. Pulled one out of the fire. Last year he had to watch, and then it was too little too late when he got in. Mm-hmm. Brandon Peters, five-star arm bounced around, don't wreck the car, son. That's kind of the take on him with a good offensive line in the running game. What got you in rhythm as a quarterback, and what do you view from both of these guys that you think maybe 
the offensive coordinators will, will try and do. Yeah, I think it's a couple things. I think, it, it, number one, just seeing those chains move, right? Mm-hmm. All right this is a tempo system in Nebraska. There's going to be a lot of motion, shifting, formations, tempo, all of that. And when you see those chains move, anybody, everybody gets into rhythm. Play caller gets into rhythm. Coordinator gets into rhythm. Quarterback and everybody follows along. So I think essentially important there. A little different, I think, on the Illinois side. You know, that is going to be just about um, being efficient. That's about seeing that line of scrimmage move. I think the quarterback's rhythm, Brandon Peters in that case, and his tempo is going to be very much guided by what does that group up front do? Adrian can, cre- can create. He can get out of chaos. He can use his legs and run. Peters, that's, he's not that kind of – he's not a bad athlete. He's, you know, four seven guy. He's about my height. Sat with him today, charismatic, warm, friendly, good leader. You could captain. You see all of that. And both of these guys, frankly – but I think for him, he's going to need to see like a game of tug of war on the recess. If if Illinois is is pulling and they're moving Nebraska, you can feel that. You know, I think I've told you the story when I played Nebraska in '97 at Washington. That first snap, whew, I mean, I felt. I felt those guys, Christian Peters and Mike Rucker and Grant Wistrom. I, they were on me. If you want to get Brandon Peters out of rhythm, that's what you do tomorrow. You make him feel your breath. You make that air squeeze out of the pocket, and you keep him from feeling comfortable with space around him. Nebraska's defense, like Illinois, they return a bunch, but I think there's a chance for Nebraska's defense that really kind of ended the year well, and 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 they have a chance to be special against the run. Mm-hmm. I think Illinois is going to try and test that, obviously, but – yeah, you're you're a thousand percent right to, well, to be aggressive be, and get after. It's going to be the edges of that Nebraska defense. That's where my eyes will be early. I think inside, you know, powerful Daniels, powerful guy. You know, he got some strength inside, but those edges. That's where Illinois last year. They did it differently last year. It's a the different guards, system, right? Yeah, it was a guard and center. Kramer's excellent. Uh, they were a little more pin and pull last year. A little more zone read. I think this year. As I watch Peterson, he likes that outside zone. Brett Bielema just spent three years in the league. What is most popular in the NFL right now? Right? You, yep, some of that. So I'm looking at you, number two, Caleb Tanner. Right? I'm looking at you, 95, Ben Stilley. I'm looking at you guys to set that edge. Because if you don't do that well tomorrow, you talk about jet sweeps all you want. <laughs> if you're inside, outside run, and you're winning that edge, Nebraska's, I, I don't a, they're not going to cover that seven-point spread, and I don't know if they win this game if they don't stop that first. Brock Hewards with us, Sale Varsity Radio. Of course, Brock on the Fox broadcast tomorrow. Uh, plenty of college football and, of course, his time with the NFL coverage with Fox. And, Brock, when we flip it around here, the Illini are, are getting into this 3-4, which is, is kind of new to them. That's what. Are you sure what, they are? Well, it's one of the – look, you probably are. So, and hit the brakes. Are they going to see some 3-4? Yes, I think they're going to see. Okay. No, that's fine. I don't. I didn't stop you. Go ahead. It was a good train of thought you had, but I don't, I don't so, know what they're going to do. The, okay, the Illini yeah. under Brett are a three-man front, but they, they've been so good at draw, bringing that fourth man up. Yep. So, my, my question is this. Is, is it really about patience for Nebraska on offense against the Illini defensive line from a depth standpoint? Is this? body shots and then the payoff in the fourth quarter? Well, I, I'll tell you the hard thing watching Nebraska the last couple of years, right? And I talked to some of my colleagues that have covered them and seen them as well, and we all say the same thing, man. At, at Oregon with Scott and at UCF, right, there was no need for speed. It was everywhere. Mm-hmm. It was just a blur. I covered those games. Called his Peach Bowl when he beat Auburn. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was speed. And that's not been the case. You know that more than I do. I mean, one pass play of 40-plus yards last year, and I asked God about that. Like, man, do you have somebody this year you feel like? Because all I know is that when I played at any level, but especially college and pro, you give me man-to-man coverage, let's go. You give Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, any, you give me man-to-man, we're going to beat you if I know it's man coverage because my guy knows the route. He's going to beat you. The number, especially last year, that tape was hard to watch. You just saw a man, and sorry, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in your hip pocket, and you're not going to do anything. So, yeah, I do think the run's important, but what my eyes are going to watch, because they believe, Adrian said point blank to me yesterday, this is the best I've felt by receiving core, not close. We don't have one guy that can win one-on-one. We got two, three, four guys. Two Ray, you know, has had a wonderful camp. They believe in those guys. And you know what, Illinois, when push comes to shove, what that young coordinator likes to do? Play man. Mm -hmm. You know what Belichick did in New England? Play man. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to have to beat man coverage because there's going to be an extra guy to stop the run. There's going to be extra eyes on Adrian. So to me, that's where, yes, being patient with the run. I know Nebraska fans want to run the ball. Hell, you ran the ball second best in the conference a year ago. What would that get you? Turnovers. What would that get you? Like, you got to hit home runs. You, Devontae Smith last year, Heisman Trophy winner. Do you know how many plays of 40-plus he had? Twelve? Eight. By himself, eight. There were only two teams in America that had less than Nebraska. That would be zero. That would be the beloved Minutemen. They were they were warriors when they UMass. protected our country. <laughs> uh, but, but, they, but they were horrendous on the field last year. Yeah. And uh, actually Northwestern, who won the Big Ten. So you can make the argument and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. But their defense was elite, and yeah. obviously yeah. they were in the they ball pretty effectively. Defense. Brock Heward's with us. Brock, uh, just some, uh, some, some thoughts here on – your sit down, what you can share a little bit more with, mm-hmm. with, with Coach Frost and also Brett coming back to the Big Ten. What was your uh, your takeaways? Yes, yeah, Scott has said this to you all locally, and I took it a step further with him. Why? You know, this is my favorite team. I love this team. You didn't hear that the last three years, mm-hmm. right, going into the opener. But, and obviously that's because he's feeling the temperature internally and externally turn up on him. And he said it's my favorite because you you could watch all my practice tape and you won't find a loaf right you just see guys that are bringing it and you know what i felt the same thing we actually sat down with five illini players today a bunch of their captains and i was curious they've had a physical camp hard right you got 42 seniors and super seniors are you really going to go physical in year one for brett yes they did and they all echoed i think what every nebraska guy is and that is i'm sick and tired of being a loser Mm-hmm. I'm tired of this losing. So if you tell me that this is going to help us win, put the pads on. Let's go, Oklahoma drill. Let's get physical. They've done that at Illinois. I think for Scott, you now have guys with four-plus years here that have been in it, that are, that are sick and tired of losing, that are sick and tired of hearing all of that, and now they want to go out and do something about it. And they're practicing and, and put the buy-in and played on the practice field very, very hard. Now, as you know, they got to go execute, and more importantly, in the final 10 minutes of this game where it's going to be decided. We teased the uh, one possession record with Nebraska. They've been close. Yep. 12 and 20 could be flipped around, or at best you split it in half and, and you're around 500. Yep. What, what, do you, uh, what do you make? Why? Why has Nebraska been uh, unable to finish? You have got to be in those moments and get it done, right? You, you want to talk about experience and where does that really play itself out? Because we see freshmen come in and star. Heck, Adrian, in some ways, was at his very best his freshman year. So you can come in and, and make plays and, and, you know, have some star power. But I believe when it comes to true confidence and belief, you've got to win those kind of games to turn it until you do. And then when you don't and they continue to add up and you continue to go, okay, wow, we played some good ball for 50 minutes. Now can we get it done? Instead of thinking, now can we get it done? The flip of the switch is, we're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. We have to get it done. Catastrophic penalties, mistakes, turnovers, those have obviously been, you know, right there in the mix in those fourth quarters of not finishing those games. But but now it's got to be Adrian, you know, 53 touchdowns, 30 30 turnovers. Mm -hmm. That's that's not going to that's not going to get it done. Take care of the ball, as you guys know, will be priority number one tomorrow. They've won games mm-hmm. that are that are one score ball games in his career, and he's been a lot of the reason why. And I think back, but it's been a long time. I think back to the Michigan State State Snowball, where brutal win, mm-hmm. smarty defense. They went a nine to six classic, right? <laughs> Big Ten classic in November. But in all honesty, uh, it's been so far away and there's been a lot of kids here, Brock, that, that haven't experienced it. Mm-hmm. They're hungry That's for right. it. But it's it's between their ears too when it comes to winning time. Yeah, and in those fourth quarters and in winning time, it usually is situational football. Mm-hmm. It's usually third downs. It's usually four-minute drill. It's usually red zone. It's usually a two-minute drill. It's all of those things that you've spent the last month in every one of those situations. Uh, you would have enjoyed Bielema today. It was it was a cool 40 minutes. It was Belichickian as far as not, you know, shortness with us, but as far as just football wisdom in those two years there and feeling like he learned more in those two years there than he did in 12 years as a head coach. Mm-hmm. It is key management. That is Belichick to a T. It is those moments. I said to Scott, why? Why have you struggled so much in the red zone scoring touchdowns? And he pointed again to those catastrophic mistakes. I mean, you go backwards in the red zone, you are dead on arrival. So tomorrow, final 10 minutes, Nebraska fan, you will be like I will be. Can you close it out with a four-minute drill? 
Can you convert critical third downs when you get in the red zone on the road tomorrow? 40,000 people going to be loud, hot, sticky. Are you going to score touchdowns or are you going to score field goals? You know, those will often lead to the final outcome in these one-possession games. Brock Heward with us. Brock, it's good to see you again, You as man. well, man. Appreciate you it. You as well. Brock Heward, catch him, of course, with the coverage tomorrow, Nebraska and Illinois. A quick timeout. Hail Varsity Roadshow presented by the Nebraska Lottery. And now. And now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Hey, big thanks to Brock Heward, uh, Hall of Fame quarterback with the Washington Huskies NFL uh, standout and part of the Fox broadcast, uh, kind of the real deal there. Sit down with Bielema, sit down with Frost. He asked, uh, why, why'd we piss Scott off? <laughs> some of us have, some of us haven't. I don't know. But he's so right on, man. And, and we have talked about it from time to time, not only turnovers and the line of scrimmage, but can you on in a one-possession game and some awesome nuggets there from, from Brock Heward on Nebraska's mindset, what they're uh, excited about. You, you, he had a chance to get caught up with Adrian Martinez. And uh, we want to welcome Adrian Martinez to the Herd at Family, by the way, with Adrian's podcast. And, and Adrian's obviously excited with, with his trust level and his comfort uh, when it comes to uh, the receiving core he has. But big thanks to Brock Heward. And it's fun to catch up with him over the years with the games he's covering and uh, where he's at with uh, Nebraska football. And just he has a, a really a good chance to, to see Nebraska and then get the, the, the sit down, right? Well, we are on the road. We are in Champaign. We are at Hula Hands here outside on the patio, the I Hotel, powering our road trip not only for, for this roadie to Champaign, but also Norman, Oklahoma, and then Minnesota for the Gopher Showdown the middle of um, – of of October is our friends at Aero Brokerage, and and uh, and then of course Ferris Financial Group and Aero Brokerage, a full service real estate broker owned and operated by local real estate investors. And Aero Brokerage re, uh, specializes in real uh, real estate investment. Also, uh, that's just the beginning. They have a small but uh, mighty team of talented realtors that help clients in all uh, real estate developments, including buying, selling, staging, investing, and more. Uh, be sure you visit your friends at Arrow Brokerage today. Uh, brokerage at arrowlincoln.com for email, arrowlincoln.com backslash brokerage for the website. And Facebook is at Arrow LNK, Instagram at Arrow underscore Lincoln. Uh, when it comes to the uh, Ferris Financial Group, they are wonderful. Uh, their goal is to educate, coach, and help you work towards your investment goals. They specialize in investment strategy, but can also help you with budgeting. That is key. And also planning strategy uh, when, when it comes to people through times of transition, new job, or uh, that job change. Uh, your Ferris Financial Group uh, professionals will be there for you. And when it comes to future plans or retirement, they are there for you. Contact Marcus Schmidt, 402-525-6824, marcus.schmidt at uh, lpl.com, or reach out ferrisfinancialgroup.com. Elijah, a lot to unpack with, with what Brock said, and, and he's right. You have those guards that will get out on the edge. It's been what a, a staple of Illinois football. It's been a staple of Wisconsin football with that pin and pull you know it well as an offensive lineman, Elijah, and you'd see Nebraska do it with the quarterback power game. Uh, one of the tackles would, would pull inside and and lead the way for that up-the-middle draw play by your quarterback. Well, the pin and pull's been uh, so good for Illinois and, and Brett Bielema. Your edges will be so, so tested, and you know who's going to be uh, up for your player of the game in a Nebraska win tomorrow? Potentially Caleb Tanner. Caleb Tanner is a guy that uh, people are waiting on. Nebraska's waiting on. Caleb's been waiting on, number two for the Big Red. And uh, it sounds like he has had a wonderful camp. It sounds like he could be a difference maker. It sounds like Caleb Tanner could be that disruptor that you had in Central Florida that is like that missing ingredient, that key piece to make this defense go from, from good to great and to generate some takeaways. So that's that's one guy 
Now, under the microscope, Elijah, Caleb Tanner tomorrow, it'll be fun to see what he does and how he performs. Yeah, and somebody's got to be that difference maker coming off the edge. Um, when you look at Brandon Peters, he's mobile, yes, but he is not Justin Fields. Uh, he's not Penix from Indiana. Uh, he is still a guy who, if you get him under pressure, uh, he is going to struggle immensely. Uh, so it's got to be huge to go to go find somebody, whether it's Feldarius Payne, whether it's Caleb Tanner, whether it's JoJo Doman, uh, maybe Garrett Nelson has uh, developed his pass rush a little bit. Somebody's got to be that guy uh, to get some pressure. And up up the middle, you've got a guy like Ben Stilley as well, or Ty Robinson, uh, who uh, all accounts have been. These guys have even stepped it up even more uh, through this camp. Somebody's got to be getting pressure. Uh, and uh, inside scoop, uh, I saw Feldarius Payne last weekend just in passing and said, Feldarius, uh, how many sacks are you getting next week? And he said at least two. Uh, so he called his shot. Uh, Feldarius calling at least two sacks for himself this week. Um, but I, I think when you just look at this Husker team as a whole, uh, you got to have three, at least three sacks a game averaging throughout this season uh, to be able to, to generate what you want to be doing. Uh, just uh, can't let a quarterback stand back there uh, and, and throw the ball over the middle, throw the ball wherever he wants to. You can't have five, six seconds. He's got to be under pressure. Well, think of last year's opener, right? As good as Justin Fields is and was, uh, he had all day sign footballs no no shot there at ohio state fan but he had all day to sign footballs and find great wideouts downfield some twitter response coming in uh dan uh, tweets in and i think dan might be confused i didn't i didn't remember brock heward getting poked in the eyes in 1997 or 1998 i think that was chad may in 1994 the the alleged eye gouging occurred uh, Dan also is calling his shot. He thinks that Nebraska gives these punks, uh, and this is one of Dr. Rob Zadiska's favorite sayings, a good old-fashioned dirt road ass kicking. <laughs> uh, dirt road ass kickings are, are fine by Eddie and all Nebraska fans, and there's a lot of dirt roads on the way to Champaign-Urbana. But uh, good stuff from Brock Heward. That's uh, going to be posted uh, and is posted on ESPN Link at Twitter. We'll also tweet out the video as we have StreamYard going uh, here at Houlihan's Restaurant, the I Hotel. We're outside. Uh, I think uh, Doc, uh, Rob the Suit dropped some napalm. So those damn bugs behind us that sounded like, you know, alien invasion, they have gone away, thankfully. Uh, we are interested in checking in with the Pride of Fairbury. NBC Sports is Bill Dolman. And then a Searles siding. Jeremiah Searles, our favorite Husker, Buffalo Bill, and, and, and a Minnesota Viking. Uh, Searles going to be with us here in hour two. Get his take on things. You can join us at 466 3776. 466 3776. And Real Red Reaction, powered by Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. Don't forget, we are here around 3 30 as soon as the game ends. Take your thoughts, take your calls, take your feedback, take your interaction on Twitter and Facebook with uh, a Husker win. We will tell you how that is going to happen. Uh, Nebraska and Illinois, high noon kickoff. It'll be fantastic. Hale Varsity Roadshow powered by Aero Capital and Ferris Financial Group. We'll wind down this first hour. A surprise one hour from now with our prediction segment. He's real. He's where he wears red, and it is Clausburn. Back for another Friday forecast. Hour one winding down here on Hale Varsity. Chime in 402 466 ESPN or email the show Chris at HaleVarsity.com. Just try me. Try me. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. Roadshow Friday, Hale Varsity Radio on the campus of Illinois here at Houlihan's uh, Restaurant and Bar. Our uh, roadshow powered by uh, Aero Capital and Ferris Financial Group. Big thanks to Brock Heward earlier this hour as he is calling the game tomorrow for Fox. Standout All-American quarterback at Washington with the Huskies. And he has seen a lot of Nebraska. Was there for the Colorado-Nebraska opener that did not go so well. (laughs) in uh, in 19 but uh, a lot of things he uh, has locked in on and uh, had a chance to chat with coach frost and coach bielema and uh, just some interesting nuggets from uh, from coach frost to to brock and 
you know, we, we all hammer the, the thought about running the football, Elijah, but it could be Nebraska's receivers that open up the run game. You know, you might not be able to just line up and slam it uh, against Illinois. Uh, I know they've not been a great football team, but I don't discount some of the dudes that, that Lovey has recruited and, and what Brett can do with some of that talent level. I mean, Illinois is the same team that won last year. They've been a, a tough out for Nebraska over the years in the Big Ten, quite honestly. But I think this is a, a different a different Nebraska team and uh, going to be about uh, making sure that edge is set for the Nebraska defense to be uh, a good and, and turn into a great defense. Reminder about buckling up 70% of people in fatal crashes in Nebraska, not properly. A seatbelt can reduce the risk of fatal injury by up to 60%. Your best defense in any crash buckling up brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. So we are set. Predictions coming up here next hour. Jeremiah Searles on the way. And, yes, uh, the pride of Fairbury, Bill Dolman with NBC Sports. I can't wait to, uh, to hear Bill's score prediction because it's always unique. Uh, some of the research and the numbers over the last couple of seasons that still bother me, not just the score, not just the record, but the 506 allowed on the ground. Do you have a number, Elijah, that, that Illinois I, – I think Illinois has got to be held below 175 or fewer for Nebraska to, to get out of here alive. At least I think that's what the defense has got to do. That's where I'm at. Uh, you say 175. I even say 150. Uh, I think you got to run the ball for at least 200 yards. That should be Nebraska's goal. They did it uh, last year against Illinois. No, I'm saying they, 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 they've, they've got a ho- – They've got a whole Illinois below 175. Yeah, yeah, and, and I even say 150 uh, because 175. I mean, there's been rumors that Bielema okay. might be okay. tra- might be trying to speed us up this year, uh, go a little faster with his offense. Um, but 175 yards rushing with Bielema feels different than 175 yards rushing with a team like Minnesota or a team like uh, Ohio State or, or any of those teams because they are so much more up tempo than you. If if you're letting Bielema get 175 200 yards on you, he's going to be chewing up the clock. Uh, that's 30 plus minutes of possession time uh, to get 200 yards rushing on the on the ground. So. Uh, 150 is my number where I think you can still win the game if they're up around 175, even 200. Uh, But things become much more difficult for you because he's going to be limiting the amount of possessions you're going to be having. No, that's just it. You don't want to – obviously, it is so key for Nebraska. Nebraska is a different football team. A lot of teams are different when they are out in front, and that's not been the case either with Nebraska – in a lot of in a lot of ball games they've not been out in front they've not been front running they've been trailing they've been trying to get even they've been trying to overcome a turnover or two or four so our two's on the way it's hail varsity here in champagne welcome to hail varsity radio the voice of husker nation insight opinion expertise with the biggest and best names talking nebraska across the state join the show on twitter at hail varsity and at schmitz underscore radio call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865 here's chris schmitz Thanks for hanging out. Hour two, Bar City Radio. And by the battery, we're on the road here in Champaign. Friday, prevent presented for a brokerage and Ferris took their power in the roadie here across the great state of Nebraska through Iowa and through Illinois. We uh, arrived uh, yesterday and uh, set up. Good stuff from Brock Heward, part of the Fox Pro back with the University of Washington. He was here on the patio with us as the, thank God the bugs have stopped uh, chirping at us. But it's awesome, man. We are we are out here on the patio at the I Hotel at Hands. We'll be back out here tomorrow following a Nebraska win. We'll tell you how that happens and make our predictions here in about 40 minutes uh, with the Real Red Reaction tomorrow around 3.30 as soon as the game is done. Elijah Herbal back at our ESPN studios. And big thanks to him. And uh, we welcome in the pride of Fairbury, NBC Sports, is Bill Dolman with us. Billy D, one day away from kickoff. I know you're 
back uh, in, uh, in God's country. It's awesome to spend some time with you. How excited are you for tomorrow, man? Well, I'd be a lot more excited about it if we could figure out how to turn the TV on at your mom's place. But uh, I guess maybe we can talk about that after the show. <laughs> but I, I... That's so wrong. That sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying all day to get the dead gum Roku to work. That sounds but, uh... so bad. <laughs> so anyway, uh, no, it's exciting that the, the well, game is finally here. Well, you know, dear old dad. Your old dad had 45 remotes, so that that's kind of <laughs> not your fault nor my fault, but it is what it is. So Bill Dolman is uh, is is in Lincoln, and he's like, "Yeah, <clears throat> trying to get the damn remote to work at your mom's house." Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. No, it's football season. Uh, it's football season, so we're gonna go back to football versus. Uh, ver- versus uh, inside jokes, uh, and uh, we're going to get into Nebraska, Illinois, Bill. All right, all right, and then we'll we'll go through a tutorial shortly, shortly on on getting the damn Roku to work in the living room. So, how you feeling? How are you feeling about Nebraska tomorrow? You know, it, it's 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 really kind of odd, and I think maybe it's just because it's it's been a year since we've been in this position or two years since we've been in this position of it's, it's actually, it's actually college football season and it actually kind of feels like college football season, but I'm trying to remember what it felt like when it was college football season, just because everything has been so, uh, so odd for the last what, 18, 24 months. So that's exciting. Uh, it's unfortunate for me that, you know, that they're not opening the season at home. I think it would have been cool had it been in Ireland and all that. But there's just always something about college football season in Lincoln, starting off in Lincoln, get a couple of games under the belt, and then you, you're kind of you're off and away. And for them to start off in Illinois, where I get, you're there, but I can't imagine that there is as much passion for an Illini home game ever, let alone the season opener, as there would ever be uh, for a game in Lincoln, especially when it's to kick off a season like what we're about to, about to embark on. Bill Dolman's with us, uh, Pride of Fairbury, NBC Sports, Hale Varsity Radio. So, Bill, you you chirped in and out there. I did a quick reboot. I caught part of what you're saying, and, yes, there's excitement. I can't wait for high noon tomorrow as you've kind of followed and listened along to to Coach Frost and, and, you know, Scott real well, covering him and, and working with him for as many years as you did. You know, what do you feel about tomorrow here with the magnitude, all the national either writers or talking heads, because it is college football, have focused a little bit on Nebraska, and they keep hammering that that pressure drum. And, yeah, you need to win this football game if you're Nebraska and you're going into year four. But as far as Scott, his personality, and getting his team ready here, do you think there'll be some nervousness or some, some um, well, some, some fear of failure tomorrow? Well, I think there's got to be some some semblance of a fear of failure, um, no matter what, especially going into this season. But you know, maybe maybe this season more than any other, and, and maybe that was Scott's message in his five minute press conference, you know, on Tuesday, that look, I don't have time to talk. We got business to take care of, and maybe in, in as little as he said, he was saying a lot, and that was the message to the media to the fans to the team oh, let's let's get back to business i don't want to be here long i don't have much to say i don't want to talk about any investigation that has <laughs> gone nowhere in 10 days let's just mm-hmm. go play and i think for him it's just it's the same it's like i was saying earlier and maybe i've dropped out you know we're, we're two years away from the excitement real excitement of the start of a college football season you know, last year was just completely disjointed, and Nebraska was the only team in the country that wanted to play. And now we're here, and so you know, for maybe, maybe it's for Scott. Let's let's just go. Let's get this thing done. And let's let's take care of business tomorrow. Bill, how does Nebraska take care of business? What what's your takeaway and thought on the uh, the game plan here? How, how does Nebraska handle it? Well, I think I think. 
both teams are going to probably be – I think Illinois wants to run. I think Nebraska wants to run because that's part of the offense. But this is, you know, this is Brett Bielema's first year. He's got a new coordinator on offense. He's got a new co- – everything is new at Illinois. Even though they've got more sixth-year, seventh-year seniors than anybody in the country, it's all new. So there's not a lot that he can implement offensively. So I think that they're going to want to run. They're going to try and force Nebraska to run. The, the team that throws the ball better, and I don't want it to come down to a passing game, but the team that throws the ball better, I think, is the one that's you know better suited to win the game. And remember, Adrian Martinez didn't play against Illinois last year. That was Luke McCaffrey's game to win or lose, and he lost. So I, I think if it comes down to who has to throw, who's forced to throw, and who can be better at it, it's got to, that that edge has to be to Adrian Martinez. If Omar Manning is who he is as advertised to be, Samari Toure, Oliver Martin. So I think I think the team that throws the ball most effectively is going to win. I think Nebraska is going to run it okay no matter who the starter is. And again, I've, t- I've said this from spring ball on. Nebraska's offensive line is going to be critical in protecting Martinez. And I think Nebraska's defensive line, if, if, if Illinois has to run the ball because just that's just where they are under Brett Bielema, Nebraska's defensive line is what's going to win the game tomorrow. Bill, I wouldn't trust uh, Peters to chuck the football. I know he had a career high last year, but that's because his run game set him up, and he wasn't asked to do too much. Now, uh, I think Nebraska is going to load up to, to try and stop the run. Are you concerned that this could be a third straight year where Illinois has their way running the football going at Nebraska's edge? That's what I say. I, I No, I, I think Nebraska's defensive line is going to play well. You've got experienced linebackers. You've got a, you've got a strong secondary that will probably cheat up because they don't have uh, a, a great core of receivers. Again, if you're, if you're going to compare passing games, which is odd to talk about in a Nebraska game, they don't have the receiving core that Nebraska appears to have. I mean, really kind of unproven because we don't know that much about Manning. We don't know about Torrey and Oliver Martin joined the team middle of last year. But when it comes to Illinois' run game, there's no way that two guys that remind me of Craig Johnson and Tim Wirth running last year are going to have 100-yard games against, against them again for the second straight year. That's not going to happen. So they're not going to have 285 or 300 yards rushing against Nebraska. Also, keep this in mind, Nebraska had five turnovers last year. That was one of the worst Nebraska football games in decades. And there's been, unfortunately, a lot in the last couple of decades. But five turnovers. And don't forget about the wayward punter that was really the signature play <laughs> you know, of, of, the, of the season last year. You know, the guy runs 48 yards, picks up 14, and, and they win the game, what, 41 to 20 or something like that. But they had five turnovers. You, that's not going to happen. Martinez has to. If Nebraska turns it over five times, they deserve to lose. You deserve, deserve to lose any game you have five turnovers. But Martinez, if Nebraska takes care of the football, they can control the punter and not let Tim Worth and Craig Johnson run loose for 100 yards apiece. They're going to win the game. That's, and I think Martinez is going to have a great start to the season. This will be a big conference lift for him. I think the offensive line is going to prove to be Big Ten worthy, and the defensive line is going to control the run game. Bill, on top of that punt, another forgotten, embarrassing play from last year was Luke McCaffrey taking it around the edge on an RPO, and then as he's getting wrapped up, he throws it backwards, and Illinois picks it up inside our 20-yard line. Uh, it was just a, at times a comedy of errors last year, but I think one of the keys for Nebraska uh, to get a win in Champaign is going to be stopping the run. I'm with Chris, and I think the, the defensive line is going to be huge. Uh, we, we saw a picture today of, uh, of Ty Robinson getting yeah, his I head shaved. Bill, you still with us? Yep. Okay, uh, I was just talking about how it's uh, it's necessary for Nebraska's defensive line uh, to uh, to really buck up and, and stop the run uh, tomorrow. And we saw a picture today from Jason Peter on Twitter of Ty Robinson getting his head shaved, getting the buzz cut. Do you think it's necessary for defensive linemen to have a buzz cut to be successful? <laughs> well, I remember, uh, I, I think it was, what, 97, 98, somewhere in there where all, where all those guys, Wistrom and... Tomich and the Peter brothers, they were all buzzed up. So if, if that's what it takes, I'd rather see those guys buzzed up like that than wearing those fancy black shirts that were given out in practice. I know it's an honor, and I know it's a big deal, and it was cool that they had all those guys come back and give them. But those black shirts that they give out ought to be the same ones that Mike Corrigan got from Kep Hardings back in 1960, whatever it was. Those should be rags. Those should be 62. tags. Those should be awful. 
That's what that's what makes a black shirt. Not those nice fancy things you can hang on a wall. Those things have to embody what it takes to be a black shirt, and it's got to be rough and rugged. So you're telling me there's got to be a little stank on it. Yeah I, I, yeah, I would hope it's the same one that Christian Peter wore, and it hasn't gone through a Glenn Abbott Glen, uh, washing machine. Come on. Be black Bill, shirts. Uh, a thought. He, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that they'll have to be with, uh, with Nebraska here as, as they gear up for Illinois. Well, we've kind of touched on the game plan, what needs to happen, what you think will happen. Now we turn our attention here to just where Nebraska goes offensively. Do you have a feel or, or a, a, a guess, you know, where they go running back-wise, or does it matter? Does it matter what they do or who they turn to for the initial carries? You know, I've said all along, I don't think that it matters in this offense any longer. I, it, it, I think it did back in the day. But, uh, you know, it, it all has come down to we've not seen Step. We've only heard about him for the most part. Gabe Urban was great in the, in the spring game. Um, Morrison and, and, and was great at Oklahoma. So there's a lot of unproven and a lot of, a lot of questions with the team. I, what happened to Jacquez Yant? He was the star of the spring, and he got a scholarship and all that. What's happened to that guy? So I don't really think it matters. What matters is that there is production and that there's depth and power along the offensive line. I'm not going to dub them the pipeline and the, all, the, all of that. If those guys can can move the line of scrimmage, it's not going to really matter in this offense who gets the bulk of the carries. It, it, I, I thought Gabe Urban was great in the spring, but they're going to know the guy that fits the, the best play calls, and the bottom line is Adrian Martinez has to protect the ball, whether he's throwing it, keeping it, or pitching it. Bill, before we get you out of here, we got about two and a half minutes. Uh, if Nebraska gets the win tomorrow, who is it uh, because of? Is it because of any certain player? Is it the coaching staff calling the right plays? Uh, just give me a guy you think has got to step up tomorrow for Nebraska to get the win. Well, I, I, I keep talking about the lines, uh, most importantly. Um, you know, th- this is a key game for Scott and, you know, for whatever, you know, Lubick is to him in terms of being an offensive coordinator and a play caller. But I think Nebraska has to show some type of – uh, I want to see. I want to see a game plan that flows. You know, when when Tom would call games over his 25 year head coaching career, you know, games would flow from the first quarter to the second quarter. The third quarter would set up the fourth quarter, and then by the end of it, you had you had basically read a novel from beginning to end. Too often we see plays that are, you know, everything is a short story. It's like one series to the next, to the next, to the next. Nothing sets anything up, and it's like let's try this. I think Scott has to have a full cognitive flowing game plan from the outset that set things up for the third and the fourth quarter and to where you see Nebraska being a a dominant football team moving the ball offensively in whatever way that it wants to. I hope there's some creativity, but I want to see some you know basic power football that shows that that offensive line uh, is dominant and can move the line. That Nebraska on third down and goal from the two-yard line doesn't settle for a field goal. It should never get to third down. <laughs> you know, if you're inside the five, Nebraska should be in the end zone with you know within two or three plays. Bill Dolman, Pride of Fairbury, NBC Sports. We will give Bill Dolman a tutorial on the Roku remote <laughs> shortly. Uh, Bill, I need a prediction. I need a score, and I need to know what happens uh, about a block and a half from here tomorrow. Okay, well, I, I've been trying to, to keep tabs on lines because, you know, that's, that's me. I, you know, I used, to, you know, I used to make all the Six bets when I was 10 years old with, uh, with, with Cliff Rigg and company. Uh, okay, so it's 6.5. Uh, last I saw was 54.5 with the over-under. So if you combine those numbers, I say Nebraska wins it 84.5 to 7.5. Bill Dolman says Nebraska the cover. Nebraska the tribute to the 83 Minnesota road trip. 84.5 to 7. That may be some of our blood alcohol numbers tonight. (laughs) But uh, Nebraska the win, the the cover. And uh, Bill Dolman uh, still working the – what you got to do is download the app. A Roku app to your phone, pair it to the TV, and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. Well, it might uh, cause a nuclear uh, fusion here in the uh, the neighborhood, but we'll give that a shot. 
Bill Dolman. Bill, thanks so much, bud. Hey, enjoy lovely champagne. I <laughs> will. Bill Dolman, Jeremiah Searles on the way with Hale Varsity. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back into it, it's Hale Varsity Radio Roadshow as we are at Hands, just out here on the patio, kind of between the hedges. Rob the suit is, is waving at us. We say hi to our favorite uh, Husker NFL or Buffalo Bill, Minnesota Viking in San Diego Charger. Jeremiah Searles, baby. He is going to be on the sideline giving you all the info, all the injury updates, and, of course, his expertise. A great Husker, uh, a longtime starter for Nebraska, multiple-year starter in the NFL. Searles, it's been a while, brother. Last time we talked, you were helping me uh, find my golf ball in the woods. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm fired up for Husker season to get rocking and rolling here. Um, I'm excited for the boys to get a chance to get out there and play. But mostly I'm just excited that from here on out, every Saturday, I will get to watch football from now until Christmas. You know what? It is the the first football Saturday, uh, 24 hours from now in Champaign. And uh, it's it's so good to, to catch up and connect with you again. I thank you for spending time. What's your take, man? You're around the program. You know what it takes to play offensive line at a high level. That's what this season's going to be about. Yes, taking care of the football, but the offensive line play, the defensive line play. How do you feel? Let's start with the offensive line with, with this group of guys. You've been around them a lot. Yeah. You know, th- I think this is a good group of guys. You got a, a couple of vets in there in cam Jurgens, and I'm going to call Bryce Benhart a vet. Cause he's got a full year starting under his belt now. And then you've got some young, really hungry guys in Turner. And if I'm a betting man, I'm putting Ethan Piper and Mitch Schichterman in there at the guard position. Mm-hmm. And I think those two guys are really going to grow. I mean, you're going to take your lumps with some young guys, but I think that those guys are ready to take the next steps in their progression of growth and development. And they're going to have a great test today. I mean, you look at this Illinois defensive front, they've got some guys that can be feet. They've got some guys that can rush the passer, but the guy you got to put a hat on. And if I'm the offensive line coach, Greg Austin, I'm saying you find number 35, Jake Hansen, and you put a hat on that dude, or he will make every single tackle on the field. That's about right, because Hanson's had some uncanny, ungodly way of, of just taking the football away mm-hmm. from from everybody. And that's been the story of Nebraska, Illinois, the last three meetings, 11 turnovers. So it's absolutely paramount for Nebraska to, to take care of the ball. But when we talk about that next step for offensive linemen, Ben Hart between penalties and and some holding, you know, that, that, that falls under uh, penalties. But you know what it's like to be out there as a redshirt freshman. What did these guys, a lot of these guys, gain through last year? What's the jump supposed to look like here now year two for a lot of them? Yeah, so, I mean, when you're a redshirt, I started at left tackles, redshirt freshman, and you survive by treading water every week. You just try, you're trying not to drown out there. You got live bullets going. You're going against some really good players, and you're just trying to make it. The jump from your first year starting to your second year starting is it's no longer about surviving. It's about dominating. You're not a young guy anymore. I mean, you've played more football than 80% of everyone on that field. If you're an offensive lineman, you play every single offensive snap for that entire year. You have more experience than almost anyone when you start a full year at offensive line. And even for a guy like Piper, who started a lot of games last year, it's now time to take the next step into that domination of it's not, oh, I just need to block my guy. I'm schematically looking at things. I'm looking at how me and Jurgens are going to work together or how me and my guards, uh, Piper, Schichterman, are going to work together on our double teams and our pass off of stunts and so much more of the mental aspect of the game. Physically, you know you can do it now. You've done it for a year. That's no longer a question mark. It's all about the mental jump that you take from being able to not worry about the snap count and worry about the guy in front of you, but to start looking at the game of football as a larger picture and start breaking it down on a smaller scale. Jeremiah Searles with us, Hale Varsity Radio uh, at Searles71 underscore HSKR is where you find him on Twitter. And Searles going to be your man on the sideline with Nebraska football coverage this season as uh, Searles is uh, uh, all over this offensive line breakdown. You know, Jeremiah, let's talk a little bit here about the quarterback. Uh, you, you, like uh, like so many other Huskers, are anxious to see what year four looks like for Adrian. You played with a multi-year starter in, in Taylor Martinez. And, 
you know, what's a fair expectation for, for Adrian? We know he's put the time in. We know he's put the work in. And now it's all about mentality. And it seems like his mentality is as high as it's been since he's been here. I think he's hungry as anyone to go out there and be great. I think he's very good. I mean, it still surprises me when you look at the records, how close Adrian is to breaking a lot of the records of some of the great quarterbacks that have played here at Nebraska. He's been a good quarterback. I think he's ready to make the step into being a great quarterback. I think he really wants that for himself. I think he really wants that for his teammates. And I think he really wants that for Scott. Him and Scott came into this thing together. I mean, that was Coach Frost's first big-time recruit and i think that he wants to do it for him too and so i think there's a lot of factors that are pointing to the upward arrow of things going really well for him but he's got to go out there and execute and one thing i think we're going to see this year i don't think we're going to see as many designed runs for adrian i think we're going to protect him a little bit based off the fact that there's really nobody behind him that any of us know anything about besides hey i think the guy's name's logan smothers not a hundred percent sure (laughs) but you cannot get adrian hurt adrian is what will make this offense go So he's going to have the great breakdown in a pass protection or whatever and make some, but I don't think we'll see a lot of runs out of him. I think we're going to see him being very decisive with the football, making good decisions with his reads, with his pulls, with his throws. And I just want to see him be a great game manager and operator. And then when the game's on the line, go out there and make a play. And I think that those are all things that Adrian could do really well this year. I'm excited for him because you hear nothing but how great he's been through camp. The dude's fought through all kinds of adversity. The guy physically feels the best he has. Everything is lining up for him to have an unreal season. It's now on him to just go out and execute. And it's on the 10 other guys around him to put him in the best position to be able to execute. Uh, Searles, uh, we'll get Elijah to jump in here in just a second, but you just nailed it. The 10 other guys around him. How do you feel about, and this is my word, supporting cast? We know the O-line, I think, can be good. They can gel. There's depth. But what about the skill guys? Because Adrian's not had, in in my humble opinion, the help around him since 18. Is Does he have a similar skill set around him? Is he going to have a, a bell cow back? Could someone develop into that? He's got a lot of wideouts. We just haven't seen many of them uh, with Toure and, and Omar and, and of course, uh, Martin and and, uh, and Betts. Could, could it really be – could he have a lot of toys to play with? Could he have some fun this year? Yeah, I I really think he's got so many weapons that I think that he trusts. I think the fact that he trusts a lot of weapons is a good thing. I mean, you talk about uh, Austin Allen's a guy I think is forgotten about almost based off the fact that he's been there forever. But I think he's a guy that creates so many problems in between those two safeties that he's really going to be a guy that has a lot of targets this year. And then the biggest question is, who's the bell cow? Is it Sevion Morrison? Is it Gabe Irvin? Is it Marquis Stepp? Is it running back by committee? I'm fine with all three of those options. I really am. But you know that there's going to be a guy that eventually separates himself from the group and becomes the guy at running back. The biggest thing and, and my number one fear with young running backs is ball security. So you start worrying about them, but then you go to the outside. Oliver Martin's going to be one of those dudes that has a quiet, like 250 yard, three touchdown game. And they're going to come up to him after the game and be like, dude, you had an amazing game. And he's like, I did. And just like move on. Right. Like he's that kind of guy. I think that has that opportunity. I think Betts is another guy. You're going to see a lot of the, I mean, jet sweep last year for a touchdown, move him around, use his speed. And then really, I think Adrian's just going to be able to, get through his progression and find open receivers. Cause I think there's going to be open receivers, but the number one way to get open receivers is run the damn football early, often and effective. Jeremiah, when you're looking at this offense, Scott Frost very much has an offensive identity and what he wants to do. Uh, whenever you are looking at this offense, different body types at wide receiver, um, rumor there's going to be a lot more two tight end sets and, and different kinds of running backs, more Big Ten style running backs uh, in the offense this year. Do you think it's still going to look like that traditional Scott Frost offense just with different pieces or do you think he's going to tailor his offense to the guys he has? You know, I think he wants to keep tempo. I think that's in Scott's blood. Um, I don't you cannot change who you are to your DNA. And I think tempo is in Scott's DNA. I do think we're going to see more of a physical up-tempo offense, which you can have. Just because you're up-tempo doesn't mean you have to run sideways. You can be up-tempo and hammer down in between the tackles for three, four yards at a time. And I think that's kind of what his identity is going to be. If I was a betting man, I would say we're going to see a lot more in between the tackle runs. We're going to see a lot more 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends, maybe even some 13 personnel with three tight ends in the game and just hammer away. But what I do think we're going to see when we see more of that inside physical run 
a lot more play action deep shots. If we can effectively get that play action game going, it'll back those safeties off, which then keeps them guessing because for two years now, I've watched nine men in the box on defense. I've watched nine defensive guys stand in the box and dare Adrian to throw the football and just know we were going to run it. Well, guess what? You want to dare him to throw it? He's got some weapons now that can absolutely take the top off of a defense and a guy can make a guy miss and go the distance too. So I think we're going to see Illinois back off a little bit and basically try and just kind of feel us out for the first half of the game and see what we want to do, and then they'll make their adjustments because Bielma's a very good defensive head coach. Jeremiah Searles with us, uh, part of the Husker sideline and uh, the Husker broadcast uh, at Searles71 underscore HSKR is where you follow him on Twitter. And uh, Jeremiah, let's let's go over to the the thought of of where Nebraska is going to be defensively. What's their identity? What's Nebraska's identity going to be? We're wondering about this offensively, but I think the strength of this team could be the defense. So I'm interested uh, as to the defensive side. What are they going to be great at? Can they be great at something? Yeah, you know, I think the greatness for this defense is going to come from their front seven. I think it's going to be a lot of Casey Rogers, Ty Robinson, Daniels, Ben Stilley. I mean, I I love Ben Stilley. College forever, right? Dude's been there for 10 Mm -hmm. years. And I think that he's a guy that's a leader. And then they're going to have to cut the slack for some young linebackers and Heinrich and and Reimers. But that's okay because that's where I'd want the younger guys to be at that linebacker spot versus that defensive line front. Because every week in the Big Ten, you're going to get tested physically. And so if we can stop the run up front, and that's where I really think we'll be good and physical with those guys, it allows those linebackers to grow. And we don't have to – we could blitz if we want to because I think we have a lot of trust in our back end. I think with Cam Taylor-Britt, Dismuke, we're still – I'm going to guess it's going to be Quentin Newsom on the other side at corner for us. And I think we have a lot of trust in those guys and the fact that they can hold up and man coverage that I don't think Shenander is going to be scared to get after guys on third down. And I'm excited about that. This is such a veteran defense. I promise you, Chenander spent maybe two, three days installing his base defense and then immediately started installing all the tricks and all the fun stuff and all the gimmicks and the blitzes and the different patterns that he has during fall camp. And I think that that's really what we're going to see is a lot of guys on the same page doing some fun stuff on defense. Searles, 30 seconds, brother. Thanks so much. Who wins and why tomorrow? I think Nebraska wins based off the fact that we're going to physically try and beat up Illinois. The last two years we played Illinois, they beat us physically. We won in 18, 19, but we lost last year. Physically, they've gotten after us both times. I think we flip the script on them this year. We physically get after them, and we get a chance to go and get a W walking out of here for week zero. Jeremiah, before we let you go, I need to ask you, um, new job for you, sideline reporter this fall. Have you been studying the film? Who you have been watching? Aaron Andrews, uh, Maria Taylor, a lot, lot of great options for you to, to be studying. You know, I, I haven't wow. watched much tape on the old sideline reporter there. I'm just going to have more of a gut guy. But if I had to pick one, it would definitely be an Aaron Andrews or Good even uh, oh, what's her name? She works at the NFL Network. Uh, Stacey Dales, big Stacey Dales fan. Know her personally. She's done a great job for a lot of years. There we go. Stacey Dales is the draft pick from Searles. Searles, uh, wander over here to the I Hotel, and we'll get you a cold one here shortly. Hey, if we don't run the football, you'll see me over there. Absolutely. There he is, Jeremiah Searles with us. Catch him with the sideline coverage in Nebraska football. Jay, thanks, brother. No problem. Go Big Red. He's in his 30s, but sounds like he was born with a stogie in one hand and a brew in the other. Now, say my name. It's Schmitty on Hale Varsity Radio. I got the body of a taut, preteen Swedish boy. Back with you, Tail Bar City Radio Road Show on Friday here at Hula Hands Restaurant and Bar, the I Hotel. It is Classic Car Showcase in several parking lots. There's a lot of vintage Mustangs, a lot of muscle. I can't quite say it like Matthew McConaughey said it uh, in Days and Confused. A lot of muscle. Uh, I, I've got no McConaughey, thank God. Um, we are here. Thanks in part to some great folks, Aero Brokerage, Ferris Financial Group. Uh, They do a wonderful job, and uh, they take care of us. We are efforting Clausburn. It is Friday, which means it's multiple balloon swallowing day for Clausburn. We will see if we uh, actually make contact with him. It was all set to go because it isn't football season. 
without a Friday forecast from the man who's imaginary and uh, where wears red. Numbers to get in, 466-3776-466-3776-800-825-5865. Reminder about Ferris Financial Group, uh, their goal to educate, coach, and help develop uh, work towards your investment goals. And they specialize in investment strategy and can also help with budgeting, planning, and overall strategy. Give Marcus Schmidt a holler at 402-525-6824, marcus.schmidt at lpl.com. When we uh, talk about your friends at Aero Brokerage, uh, they are all over real estate, and they make it painless for you. They're fully serviced in real estate brokerage. They operate by local real estate investors, and they specialize in real estate investment. That's just the beginning. They've got a small but mighty team of talented realtors who help clients in all uh, setups and all situations. Uh, That includes buying, selling, staging, and investing. For more information, brokerage at aerolincoln.com or check them out, uh, aerolincoln.com backslash brokerage. So, Elijah, any luck here with Claus? Is he is he with us? No, Claus is not with us. Uh, I called him a couple times, left him a message. Uh, I, I could do my best uh, my best Osborne impersonation if you'd like, but it's terrible. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's been uh, twelve years in running uh, for for Claus. So we will dive in. What have we learned? What have we taken with us today? Uh, as it is uh, less than 24 hours away from Nebraska and Illinois. We've taken away that it's physical tomorrow. Both lines of scrimmage are going to try and impose their will. And from a confidence standpoint, uh, Illinois has plenty, despite a a new regime, because they, they, they won last year and they physically dominated Nebraska's defense. You've got a long memory if you're Nebraska, to, to make it right. And uh, you have that opportunity tomorrow. Uh, run game's going to be uh, leaned on. Turnover is going to be premium, clearly. And really, it is about rhythm. And I think if I'm a betting man, it's going to be Nebraska and their ability to get Adrian and keep Adrian in rhythm uh, with better line play, with protection. Uh, with the ability to play action and take some shots downfield. I think it's an offense you've been waiting for at Nebraska to get downfield. Uh, You're going to have beer and blood spilled everywhere if the first play of the game is a sideline swing pass. (laughs) All right? (laughs) You're going to hear a collective groan from the stands. You're going to hear a collective groan from the state. Now, if it's a swing pass to uh, to the ghost of Mo Purify or make that Mo Washington, and it goes 75 yards, uh, Father, forgive me. Shut your mouth. Now, I'm thinking this is a reality, though. I think Nebraska has a chip. You've heard him talk about it. You'll see it in action tomorrow. And Nebraska will have the ability to take a close game because of investing in a powerful and physical running game that investment will pay off in the fourth quarter where a three-point game turns into a two-score game and it's going to be about nebraska making plays coming in off the edge caleb tanner is going to need to be big along with ben stilly tomorrow i think they will be i don't think illinois is going to try and make any money despite their good and talented interior trying to run on on snacks up the middle or, or a Ty Robinson. I think the edge is where you want to go at the opposite corner spot, Cam Taylor Britt, or at a Caleb Tanner. I think they'll be ready. I think they'll be battle tested. And quite honestly, when push comes to shove, are you get about two years in a row on Peters to beat Nebraska. Money game for Nebraska, vital game for Nebraska, a chance for Scott Frost to get local and national question marks off of his back not that we're equating beating illinois to taking down notre dame or clemson but it's it's the first test this year and you're up it's the first game this year so everyone's paying attention and it's been trendy to question his long-term employment which isn't up for discussion nor up for debate uh right now win or lose tomorrow so i think nebraska gets it done first team to 30 
Nebraska doesn't score 30 a lot. That is one of many trends that need to change in 2021. I think it is step one towards that happening. And I think Adrian Martinez, his passing attack downfield, wide outs and options, along with a good run game and a salty defense, make it a reality. Nebraska 1-0 tomorrow. They get the dub on the road here in the pig farmer's backyard, 31 to 17. Again, three-point ball game that turns into a two-touchdown ball game uh, because of Nebraska's physicality. And there we go. We will get Claus's take here in about uh, five minutes at the 550 mark is when we'll go to him. So, Elijah, I say 31 to, to 17. What, what say you? Well, uh, it's a good answer. So, wait, 31-17, that means you are taking the under. I believe the, uh, the total is set at 55 right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's when I've been, I've been going back and forth. Is this going to be a high-scoring game? Is this going to be a low-scoring game? Part of me thinks uh, Brett Bielema and his offense is all about ball control. It's all about running the football. Uh, Nebraska's going to have to make the most of their possessions. Uh, but then the other half of me thinks this is a, a different kind of Nebraska offense than we've seen uh, Scott Frost run around here. It's got different body types at wide receiver, different body types at running back. Uh, it's got uh, two athletes at tight end uh, who could be com- – complete difference makers in uh, Austin Allen and Travis Vokalek. Uh, so I, I do think Nebraska is able to score some points tomorrow. Uh, the question is, is can that defense bend but not break? I, I think Illinois is going to get their yardage with all that returning experience. Uh, can they bow up in the red zone? I think they do tomorrow. Uh, they're uh, they're going to hold Illinois to a couple field goals. So I'm going to take uh, Nebraska 34 and Illinois 23, uh, which takes the over, um, but Nebraska still covers. That's, that's what I'll go with. Okay, so Nebraska gets it handled. They, they you, you're taking the over, and let's bring on uh, Claus real quick. Claus, we are going to wait for your prediction here shortly. Are you doing okay? You've been running around today. Nice to spend a minute with you here. Well, I, I, I do apologize uh, for being late and not answering my phone. I dropped my phone. Uh, in a gigantic pile of pig feces, which I believe the people on the, at the map companies call Iowa. And oh, so, <laughs> as I'm on my way to Champaign, uh, it, it's been a little bit hazardous. Claus, hang on the line. We'll get your Friday forecast next, all right? Okay. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HailVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. One final time here from Hands here at the iHotel in their patio region. Big thanks to our roadshow powered with Hail Varsity by Aero Brokerage and Ferris Financial Group. We are back tomorrow morning, 7 to 9, weekend edition from Champaign. And then Real Red Reaction around 3.30 or once kickoff and fourth quarter completes. We are back here at the iHotel outside in the patio. Houlihan's Real Red Reaction live on site. Phone calls, input on Facebook. We'll be streaming it live video-wise as Clausburn dry heaves with the thought of me on camera. We bring in Clausburn. I say 31-17. Elijah, you said what again? Uh, you said the over is over 55. Uh, 34-23. 34-23. Elijah says Nebraska by 11. Claus, the floor is yours, my friend. Mr. Clausburn, what happens? Who wins? Why? Well, I, 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 I'm hesitant to really... Uh, have too much uh, certainty. I, I think the last several years, Nebraska football has taught us that uh, you can't always believe the hype. Uh, but then again, <clears throat> I stopped in Hastings before I left Nebraska and got plenty of Kool-Aid. So I, I think Nebraska does very, very well. I, I think uh, we've got a smarter team. After all, an uh, Illinois student is just a Northwestern reject. <laughs> And quite honestly, I forgot until the other day that Brett Pilamo was even the coach of Illinois. Uh, that's how unremarkable he is, which is not to say the same thing about his wife, but he's pretty unremarkable. The only thing I really hope for him is that Illinois has a better apparel contract 
uh, to where Nike will give him a hat so he don't have to look at that weird balding pattern he has to put on there. <laughs> I believe I saw Rob Zadis to refer to it as a male pattern faux hawk. So, <laughs> I, I really hope Nike has a solution for that and that it's not a visor like they did for Bob Stoops. So, <clears throat> I think I agree with Elijah. We've got a little bit different uh, offense this year. And it's probably the only time I'm ever going to agree with you, Elijah. So, relish this. I'm enjoying it. But I think Nebraska wins this game somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 and Illinois 17. Clausburn says Nebraska 35-17. That's where he's at when it comes to the Friday forecast. Claus, did you like risky business? Did it make you want to ride the L? The only part that I have ever seen of Risky Business is the part that Nancy always replays that has the Bob Seger tune in the background, and I really don't... Uh, I think I've repressed the rest of that memory. Okay, so the the, the Bob Seger reenactment is not on your hit list. Claus, you be good. Many thanks to you for, for jumping on with this and another season of the forecast when it works with your your schedule. Appreciate your takes today, bud. Okay. There he goes. Clausburn, imaginary, and uh, wears red. 35-17, Claus says a big red victory. Man, I missed him. Tomorrow morning. Oh, he's good. Tomorrow morning, 7 to 9, weekend edition. Myself, Mark Cranach, Elijah Herbal, and then Real Red Reaction live from the Houlihan's patio here in Champaign. Take care.